This tutorial will demonstrate how to take apart and inspect the connections of a standard hydraulic DIN connector. So tools required will be a number one or number two Phillips and a number one or smaller flat screwdriver. So for the purpose of this demonstration, the connector is just sitting on the bench. Normally, this connector would be screwed onto a device, such as your float switch or a valve. So first, you'll need to remove the connector from the device. So you do that with your Phillips screwdriver. You're going to loosen this screw. Once it's loose enough, it should pull out. You might need to thread out. It depends on how how old or new the connector is. Once the screw is loose, you'll be able to pull it up and remove it off of your device, like your float switch. You want to go ahead and remove this screw all the way, so you can either pull it out or you might need to thread it out. This connector is new, so it needs to be threaded out. Make sure that we don't lose the screw. Bottom of your connector may also have a rubber gasket. You can go ahead and pull that off and make sure we don't lose it. Uh, this strain relief right here, this clamps your cable in place and provides strain relief for the wires. You're going to go ahead and loosen this clamp. If it's tight, you may need a pair of pliers. So we'll loosen and we can pull this clear back out of here. I'm going to flip this connector over, and if you take a look at this connector, you're going to see somewhere around the perimeter, you're going to see a rectangular slot. It's going to be closest to the housing of the connector. You can see it right here. So this may be in a different spot depending on how this connector is oriented. You can orient it, clock it in different directions. So with the cable loose, and the screw removed, we're going to take our flat screwdriver and we're going to put it into this notch. And we're just going to pry ever so slightly and it should pop this free. You may need to feed the cable as you pull this. And then as you see, you have the connection free. So over on this side here, you can actually see the terminals. So when we're inspecting this, what we're looking for is to make sure that the wires are seated well in these terminals and the screws are tight so you can do a little bit of a tug test make sure that the wires are seated good in there if one was not seated good we'll demonstrate we'll loosen this up here so if one was not seated good one was a little loose in there that could be causing intermittent problems with sensor readings so what we'll want to do these wires may or may not be tinned so we want to make sure if they're not tin, we want to twist them up tight so all the strands are tight. We'll loosen up our screw terminal here just a little bit. And once it's snug so it's wires in place, and we'll give it a good tight. So again, what we're looking for is just make sure that the wires are tight, that they're not frayed, they're not shorted. Um, that they're in there good. When we go to put this thing back together, once we make sure our wires are tight, we we'll want to kind of fold the wires down because this, this center section here needs to be unblocked by the wires. That's where your connection screw will feed through. So we'll take and we'll slide this wire back in here. Depending on which direction your connector needs to go, this may need to be oriented you know, rotated 90 degrees one way or the other. So just fold the wires on top appropriately based on the direction you need to put this connector in. It will just slide down in place here and it should just click back in. So this guy's now seated back in here. We can now slide our strain relief back up. Thread it in here and tighten it up to provide our strain relief. You can reinstall your screw. You can reinstall 
the rubber gasket. And then we can plug this connector back onto our sensor device so it seats down fully. And then tighten the screw down until it's all the way nice and snug.